The most famous person in our stories is a man called Kiviok. My grandmother said Kiviok was born a long, 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 long time ago, so long ago that he was the very first person on earth. And I used to have a little joke with my grandmother. I would say, Grandmother, if Kiviok was the first person on earth, how come he had a mother? And my grandmother would say, don't argue with old people. <laughs> and I would say, okay, but how come we had a mother? And my grandmother would tell me all these wonderful stories. A long time ago, there was a tiny little boy. And this little boy left to go out to play. But there were mean boys who lived in his camp. They would run after him. They would fight him. They would make him cry. They would rip up all his clothes. And the poor boy would go home to his grandmother because he was an orphan. He had no mother and no father, so he lived with his grandmother. And his poor old grandmother would take her needle and thread and she would sew his clothes all back together again. And the little boy would put on his clothes, he would go off to play. The mean boys would run after him. They would fight him, they would make him cry, they would rip up all his clothes. And the poor boy would go home to his grandmother and his poor old grandmother would take her needle and thread and she would sew his clothes all back together again. And this happened every, every, every day. And one day, his grandmother got so tired of sewing his clothes back together. One day when the little boy came home, there was a little seal that somebody had caught for them. And it was lying on the floor. And his grandmother said, I would like you to skin that seal. So the little boy took a knife and he started to skin the seal. And his grandmother said, be careful, be careful, don't put any holes in the skin. So very, very carefully the little boy skinned the seal. And when he was all finished, his grandmother said, I would like you to take the seal skin and pull it over your head, and I would like you to put your head in that pail of water. There was a great big pail of water on the floor, so the little boy took the seal skin, he pulled it over his head so that it fit nicely, and he looked like a little seal. And then he took a deep breath, and he stuck his head in this pail of water. And he kept his head underwater as long as he could. And when his lungs hurt, he lifted up his head and he went, <gasps> and his grandmother said, do it again. So he took another deep breath, and he stuck his head back in his pail of water. And he kept his head underwater as long as he could, going like this. <laughs> you know what seals look like? He looked like this. <laughs> And he kept his head underwater as long as he could, and when his lungs were just about to break, he lifted up his head and he went... <gasps> and his grandmother said, do it again. Every time he lifted up his head, his grandmother would say, do it again. He would take a deep breath and he would stick his head back in this pail of water. And after a while, he could keep his head underwater for a long, 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 long time. Because after a while, when he had his head underwater, the sun would move. And finally, his grandmother was satisfied that he could keep his head underwater long enough. And she said, I would like you to go down to the beach. And when you're walking to the beach, make sure nobody sees you. And when you get to the water's edge, I would like you to take the seal skin and pull it over your head, jump into the water and go for a swim, and come up right in front of all your mean friends who were playing on the beach. And sure enough, all the mean boys were playing on the beach. So the little boy took the seal skin, he walked down to the beach. He made sure nobody saw him. And when he got to the water's edge, he took the seal skin, he pulled it over his head so that it fit nicely and he looked like a little seal. And then he took a deep breath and he jumped into the water. And he went first went underwater. And he came up right in front of all the mean boys who were playing on the beach. And they looked at him and they said, Hey, there's a little seal. They thought he was a little seal. And they all ran up. They grabbed their kayaks, you know, their long skinny skin boats. They put their kayaks in the water. They hopped in. They took their long paddles. And they started paddling following the little seal. 
and the little seal would go down into water and he would swim a little bit farther out and then he would come up again. And then he would go down and he would swim a little bit farther out and then he would come up again. And the mean boys who fought him and made him cry and ripped all his clothes, they were paddling their kayaks, following along behind him. And it was a beautiful, beautiful day. And after a while, they were way out at sea. And when they were way out at sea, when the little seal came up, he would lift up his arm and his leg and he would sing. <laughs> And then he'd go down again. And he would swim a little bit farther out, and when he came up, he would lift up his arm and his leg and he would sing, Where is my wing? I want my wing. And he would make a crying sound like a little baby. People say, the weather that was on the day you were born is your very own weather. And that is why, if you were born on a sunny day, usually the sun shines on your birthday. If you were born on a rainy day, usually it rains on your birthday. And this little boy was born on a very, very windy day. And he was calling the weather that was on the day he was born. Where is my wind? I want my wind. And he made a crying sound like a little baby. Well, well. Just like the day he was born, the wind heard him, and it started to come. And it got clear and windier, and before long there were huge waves in the water. And the kayaks with all the mean boys were going up and down, up and down in the big waves. And every now and then a giant wave would come, and it would flip the kayaks over. And the mean boys who fought him and made him cry and ripped all his clothes, they were sinking to the bottom of the sea. And after a while, there was only one person left. That person was Kivio. Now Kivio was a very strong boy. He was really good with his paddle. And he paddled his kayak on and on, going up and down in the big waves. And when a huge wave came and flipped his kayak over, he would roll it back up using his paddle. He was really, really good with his paddle. And he kept on going. No matter how cold and wet and tired he got, he never gave up. He paddled his kayak on and on. Every time it flipped over, he would roll it back up. And finally, after a long time, the wind stopped. And the sea became really, really still again. And Kivio was so tired, he put his paddle on his lap, he put his head on his chest and he fell asleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he sat up in his kayak. He looked around, he looked all around, but there was nothing but water. He was way out in the middle of the ocean. And because he was way out in the middle of the ocean, he couldn't see any land anywhere. And because he couldn't see any land anywhere, he didn't know which way to go. And while he was sitting there, he started to think about some strange and wonderful things. And one of the things he thought about was this little feather he had on the back of his coat. You see, ever since he was a tiny little boy, his mother always sewed a little feather on the back of his coat. See, I told you he had a mother. <laughs> and his mother always sewed this little feather. It was a feather from a little bird called a sawhawk. And the sawbok is a little brown bird that swims in tiny ponds and when it's not swimming, it goes around in circles, all around and round and round. And while it's swimming around in circles, it goes like this. They're funny little birds and I have to watch them. And he had this little feather on the back of his coat. And he always wondered what it was for. And while he was sitting there, a little bird came. The little bird landed on his kayak. It looked at Kivio and said, Do you know which way to go? And Kivio said, No, I don't know which way to go because there's nothing but water. And the little bird said, Well, follow me. And so he started to follow the little bird. He had his kayak on and on. After a long time, he saw this really thin line in the horizon like a little piece of thread. And he thought it was land. And so he paddled his kayak toward it. 
But after a while, it disappeared. And Kimio said, oh, that must have been a big wave. And the little bird looked at him again and said, do you know which way to go? And Kimio said, no, I don't know which way to go because there's nothing but water. And the little bird said, well, follow me. So he started to follow the little bird again. And he had his kayak on and on after a long time. He saw this really thin line on the horizon like a little piece of thread. And he thought it was land, so he had his kayak toward it. And this time, it did not disappear. It got thicker and thicker and thicker, and Kivio landed his kayak way over on the other side of the ocean, in this strange place. And when I was a little boy, and my grandmother told me that story, for the longest time, I didn't know the story had an ending, because I always fell asleep. You like that story? <laughs> Well, it was a very strange place that Kimio ended up in. The very first thing he came across over on the other side of the ocean were giant spiders. And they started to chase him and he had to run away. And then he came across a giant bumblebee. He was cooking in a strange looking igloo with no top. And he was cooking some strange stuff. And he had all these adventures over there. And then he got homesick, so he started traveling. And while Kivio was traveling, he traveled through every part of the north. So there are stories about him everywhere. If you go to Siberia, you can hear stories about Kivio. If you go to Alaska, you can hear stories about Kivio. There are Kivio stories all across northern Canada, and there are Kivio stories in Greenland, too. And as a matter of fact, one day I was telling stories in Toronto, was the Toronto Harbor Front. And when I was finished, this man came up to me. He was a blonde guy, and he said, you know, that's a very strange word. I said, what word is that? He said, Kivio. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we have a word just like that. And I said, where are you from? He said, Finland. He said, in the Finnish language, they have a word which sounds just like Kivio, and it means stone man. In our stories, Kivio was born a long time ago, but he is still alive today. But he is so old, his body is turning to stone. And someday when his heart turns completely to stone and stops, that will be the end of the world.